Hey everybody, Professor Snart checking in as we uh, keep moving through our creative writing course into our next genre, which is uh, poetry, which is um, kind of a funny one. I, if there's a, a, an area of expertise that I truly have, or the area that I've published most in, or um, written most, and kind of researched most, it's probably poetry, although the others tend to run a fairly close second. Um, and I think it's the one maybe I just have the, the most affinity for. Um, but it also tends to be one that people are, I think, not resistant to so much, but maybe a little intimidated by. Um, there's so much baggage that goes along with poetry. That's the thing that I find a little bit interesting about it, is that it's both really marginal um, in the sense that, you know, very few people, I think, like actively read poetry outside of classes um, or outside of requirements. It's not really part of people's daily life in any way or in any obvious way. Um, and, and again, even if you sort of tell somebody you're writing poetry or you, God forbid, you are a poet, it just carries all of this mostly negative connotation or at least really well delineated, um, baggage with it. Um, and yet, uh, in some other ways, it's, it's really, really central to our lives, even if we don't think about it that way. Um, you can think of song lyrics in some ways as poetry, and uh, you know, most people have uh, music that they like to listen to. Um, a lot of advertising, you know, print-based advertising, will take the form of poetry, both in terms of its intensity of language use, but also even its presentation on a page. Rarely do you see advertising that are large blocks of really prosaic text. It takes the form of that that um, much more spare, sparse, kind of intense uh, uh, representation or use of language on the on the page or on the billboard or whatever it happens to be. Um, and then it's really interesting that to mark major occasions, whether they're public, like a presidential inauguration, or um, a memorial of some kind, or they're kind of private, like a wedding, a birth, a death. Um, you know, for good or for bad, these really intense life moments, you don't generally buy a card, right, a Hallmark card, with uh, a little short story in it. That would be sort of funny now that I think about it. But what we most likely find is poetry. It's often really bad and sappy and uh, obvious poetry, but poetry nonetheless. So it's weird, right, how poetry in some ways is like, you ask the average person, when's the last time you read a poem? And, you know, never high school, because I had to, whatever. Um, and yet, if you thought about it, I bet you've had more in, uh, encounter with poetry than, than, um, than you maybe realized. So it's weirdly central to our lives in some ways. It marks major occasions, and yet it's oddly peripheral at the same time. So anyway, maybe some of my fascination with poetry isn't even the poetry itself. It's just this weird way in which it exists kind of culturally for us. Okay, having said that, though... Um, let's look a little more practically at our due dates here. So we've just come out of our creative nonfiction workshop, lots of really great um, personal essays or personal uh, stories in there. Um, and now we'll have uh, one unit that gets us thinking a little bit about poetry and some ideas about how the poetic mind kind of works. Um, and then we get into our poetry workshop. So as always, it's good to keep, a, keep an eye on those due dates as they're unfolding. Notice that we have basically back-to-back -back workshops here, but you'll see a large gap in the dates. Um, so part of what happens uh, somewhere along the way, I think it's between this one and this one, is uh, spring break. So um, it doesn't really affect us physically, right? But it does intrude on our schedule a little bit. Uh, and you'll uh, obviously see that we're getting right down to uh, really the end of our course. It doesn't really feel like it to me, honestly, but after our next workshop, Again, we have that big break in there with spring break. We come back, um, we'll finish up that workshop, have a last open genre where you can write kind of whatever uh, short story, poetry, uh, another creative nonfiction piece, whatever you want. We'll have a round of uh, virtual conferences where again we can, or physical face-to-face -face conferences, where we can kind of touch base as we wind things up and then a final sort of reflection unit looking back on what we learned. So certainly lots of things to do still, but we are getting towards the end. So we're past midterm, um, definitely a good time to review your grades, see how things look, um, uh, just sort of take stock of where we're at. So let's look though a little more specifically, that's kind of the big picture, let's look where we're at in terms of the unit. 
So unit uh, nine, hopefully you took some time to do this little midterm feedback. Just, you know, give me a sense of uh, what you like and maybe what could be changed in the course. Be reasonable. I've had students doing online courses saying, I wish we could have more face-to-face -face meetings. Okay, but it's an online course, so you got to be realistic there. Anyway, into unit nine. Uh, one of those ones where you may see lots of this video or material stuff uh, not showing up, so be sure that you take the time to make make that appear. It all works on my end, so I've checked it. A really great uh, Hollywood moment from this movie called Contact with Jodie Foster. So this uh, piece that I've excerpted it seems a little strange when it's decontextualized, but it actually really, I think, works within the context of the movie. It doesn't seem as, like, corny or... or um, um, hyperbolic, maybe. Anyway, she's like traveled through space, wormholes, the usual sci-fi type stuff, and gets to this view of the cosmos that no one's ever seen before, and and she declares that they should have sent a poet, which I think is like a, um, a wonderful victory for us poets out there. So you can watch that more for fun than anything else. Fun, right, says the English professor. All right, so a quick uh, reading assignment from our book, and then uh, material for our unit is really bundled into this folder down here. So we'll be looking at a number of different things here. A couple of readings from the famous poet and critic T.S. Eliot. So he was both a practitioner of poetry, but also a theorizer, a writer about poetry. And uh, in this um, essay he wrote called Tradition and the Individual Talent, he thinks about like the poetic mind or how it works and how it um, how it operates to form poetry, or and ultimately, like what, uh, what, uh, or how poetry can be most effective. So it's a discussion of kind of the poet, but ultimately, it's a, a thinking about the product, the actual poetry that people are writing. Um, and then to to um, to go along with that, there's this really great advertisement that's a few years old by now. The ad, the campaign has come and gone, but luckily YouTube has preserved it for us for HP, the technology company, featuring Gwen Stefani from No Doubt and, of course, her own career. Um, and so it really struck me when I saw this, and again, thank God for YouTube that I could retrieve this, how the premise of the, the idea in the ad, which isn't really hers, I mean, it might sort of be hers, but she might embrace it too, but of course it's a product of an advertising campaign, uh, how it, it really, like, reflects or reiterates this idea from Eliot's Tradition in the Individual Talent, written, of course, decades and decades ago. So it seems coincidental, but in some ways, Eliot is, right, thinking about ideas about the poetic mind that have come before his and kind of reworking it. Um, and so he's part of that line of thought, if you want to think of it that way. And I think uh, the advertisement is too. And truthfully, it, you know, I'll never know, I suppose. Maybe I could find out if I really, really wanted to. But, um, you know, a lot of PR folks start in English, and so they certainly might not have been thinking consciously of Eliot as they developed this way of pre presenting, you know, this superstar in service of this tech company that wanted to celebrate creativity. Um, but, you know, the line between these things might not be totally coincidental if some of these folks on the advertising end may have been English majors. Maybe they've run into, if not Eliot specifically, then certainly ideas like this before and then wanted to enter into that conversation to sell printers, I guess, but anyway. So, seemingly coincidental, but I don't think completely unconnected, let's put it that way. So I have provided, as you can see here, sort of, uh, some readings f that are provided as ebooks. Um, I could make them uh, show up correctly by manipulating my browser here. Again, the browser help link on the left is going to be your friend, but you can also just follow the links and they'll get you to the right places. Um, this link will open up that whole ebook from, it's called The Sacred Wood, was the collection of essays, and the one that you're looking for is Tradition in the Individual Talent, again focusing especially on section two. So it's a, obviously a whole book here. I don't really expect you to wade through the entire essay, um, it's pretty interesting, but the parts that we're looking for are a little bit more focused, so I've tried to direct your reading a little bit. Here's the advertisement. Again, if any of this stuff doesn't work, make sure you let me know right away. There is uh, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Um, 
and I like that it's in its originally printed format here from our own poetry magazine way back when. Um, again, follow the link, you'll find what we're looking for. And so the discussion board asks you sort of a series of related questions about the poetic mind, about what Eliot has to say, about how this is reformulated or rethought in the HP commercial, um, and all that kind of stuff. So you're not really doing creative writing or writing a poem just yet. We're thinking about maybe some of the ideals of poetry, at least uh, in this, um, from this line of thinking, Eliot, and then the, the idea that's put forward in that, um, that HP commercial. So I think it's kind of a fun unit, if for no other reason than to see this really sort of surprising connection, but I don't think totally coincidental, between these two very different things, T.S. Eliot and then this, you know, fairly contemporary uh, technology commercial. Okay, so then we'll get into our next unit, which is a workshop unit, poetry workshop. Again, no uh, requirement exactly for form or no form or subject matter or anything like that. I do remind you of the rules of poetry or the rules of creative writing that we've looked at, so I'm certainly looking to see those reflected. As usual, you'll find yourself in a group, posting your work by the posting date, returning feedback, um, and again, what you might think, because uh, if you're just writing a short poem, that's substantially less than a five or ten page short story, um, don't limit yourself maybe to just one. So if you wanted to submit two or three poems, um, even that would be like two or three pages at most. Um, and you could uh, then get some feedback from people on, uh, on those series. You'll also see the groups are a little bit bigger, again, because the amount of just the page numbers that people are submitting aren't quite as big as what we've done in the past. Alrighty, so check your grade now that we're past midterm. Have some fun in Unit 9, and then we will uh, head into Unit 10, uh, our next workshop, pretty soon. Be in touch if you have any questions, and I'll talk to everyone soon.